Hi, welcome to Musician's Edition. We're going to start working in the Rue Banks Elementary Method book. Now, if you've played with us before, welcome back. What we're going to really work on for these first several exercises is just tones since they're like whole notes and half notes and that's going to feel pretty easy. So I want you to work on tones. If you're absolutely new to flute and haven't ever played or getting back into it, um, I'll go over the fingerings. There is a fingering chart right here in the beginning of the book. I'm not gonna lie, this is the most confusing fingering chart I've ever seen. So I'm going to take a moment to show you the fingerings as we learn them. All right, well, are you ready to play? This is exciting. Okay, so we're on lesson one, um, which is page two, but you can see the lessons are listed here on the top, lesson one, page two. All right, so this page is all about whole notes. So once again, if you've played with us before, please work on getting solid tones in your sound. And if you're new, we're gonna just get comfortable with everything. I know it looks kind of confusing. So the first thing is um, on the top here, on number one, not the exercise one, the one that's above it, it's in a circle, it says treble clef. Flutes, we all read treble clef. Even the bass flute reads treble clef. All right, then the next thing we have is a bar. Now what the bar does is it separates a measure. And a measure is, well, let's see, if you're talking, we'll talk 4-4 four, four time, which is four beats in one measure. So that bar breaks up our measures. The double bar shows the end of the song or exercise in this case. So you can see here, you know, that there's several that have the end double bars. And then we have common time. Common time is 4-4, four, four, which was what I stated earlier. It has four beats in one measure. That also means the quarter note gets the beat. To learn more about it, we had a whole theory session on it, so I recommend you check it out. All right, then we have a whole note. A whole note is worth four beats. Then on the flip side, we have a whole rest, which means not to play. Rests means don't play for four beats as well. All right, I know that's a lot to take on, but once again, that is also in that theory lesson. So if you wanna know more, I highly recommend you check that out. All right, so um, then here it's just telling us how to read music. So your spaces are F-A-C-E. That's also in that lesson. And then the lines are E-G-B-D-F. Now, what makes it easier, to be honest, is in the, the treble clef, I teach where the, the letter G is, okay? Now, going upwards, just straight up, is the alphabet. So if you look at A, then the line is going to be B. Then the space is C, D, E, F, G. It only goes till G, then it starts over at A again. Once again, if you want to learn more about reading the notes and understanding them, check out that music theory lesson. All right, but we're going to kind of learn the notes as we go along here too. So, um, you know, the more you play, the more you get used to it, the more you get comfortable with it, the more you understand it. So make sure you practice. All right, so our first note is G. And to play G, you have the thumb down. Now the thumb goes on this key here, not this one. So it's here, and then your next one goes here, and then we skip this key. And then these three keys are all hit. One, two, and three. I guess that's why it says one, two, and three on the fingering chart, but it's index, middle, and ring. And then on our other hand, it's this pinky key here. And if you didn't know how to align your flute, you have these things here are called rods. Now you don't want your rods aligned because then your pinky key is gonna be way in the back. So on the foot of your flute, you're going to want to align it with the key so your hand can comfortably fit. So anyway, G, thumb, index, middle, ring, and pinky. And it sounds like this. 
If you need to learn how to make a sound on the flute, I also recommend checking out our very first flute lesson as it tells you how to put the flute together and how to form your lips and make the sound. So if you don't know how to do that, hit here. You can learn how to do all that. All right, so now let's play our exercise one. All right, and it's just whole notes. So you're gonna play for four, rest for four. Now, I also give us a, a four beat count off because it's in common time. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, and then we're going to play. All right, ready to give it a shot? Let's go. All right, so here's the count off and then we're going to play after I do the count off. And remember, don't play during the rests. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent, how did you do? Now something I forgot to mention was tonguing. Now there's not a whole lot of tonguing with this, but it is important to take note of. So the book says attack each note with the syllable to, not th. So I've always done ta instead of to, but to is also fine. The biggest thing is that you're just ta, ta, ta. So when you hit your first note, it's going to be ta, uh, uh. Huh. No, I mean, don't do the ha ha ha, but you're going to want to go ta, ta, you want to ta into it. All right, let's do it again, and this time try to do the ta's. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Great job, how'd you do tying or toing into the flute? Excellent, now I'm a huge fan of doing things in threes because we always wanna make sure we have things down pretty well before calling it good. So let's do it one more time. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent job. Ready to learn our next note? All right, so next we have A. And to play A, it's the thumb down, index middle, and pinky. So going from G to A, all we do is lift up that ring finger. Okay? And the A sounds like this. It is a whole step higher than G. All right? Let's go ahead and try to give exercise number two a try. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna give us a four beat count off because this exercise is in common time. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent work. Did you remember to do ta's or twos? Let's do it again and make sure you tongue it. All right, ready? One, two, three, four.
Excellent work. Are you feeling pretty comfortable with the note A? Let's do it one more time for good luck. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Are you remembering to rest for four beats as well? Now you probably don't really want to count out loud when you're playing, or at least super loud, but sometimes it's okay to kind of like whisper it to yourself. That's kind of what I'm doing now, but I also kind of want you to tad bit hear the counts. All right, let's do this one more time. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent job. I hope you're feeling comfortable with that note. If not, you can always go back and play it a few more times. All right, so now we're on to exercise three. So now we're going to learn B. Now for those of you who have done the Standard of Excellence books, this is B natural. If this is your first time, we'll come back to what the natural means. But for now, this is the fingering for it. So it's thumb down, index, and then pinky. That's what it should sound like. And B is higher than A. And when you're looking at the staff, if your note is higher on the staff, the higher the note is going to sound. So if we look at G, A, B, it should sound, start going higher. In which it does. All right, so why don't you take a moment to just finger the B and get comfortable with it and let's play our exercise number three all right ready one two three four Excellent job. Now, just a quick mention, when it comes to our breathing, we wanna make sure we breathe from the diaphragm, not from our chest. So a good way to tell is if you're breathing from the diaphragm, you should be able to feel your tummy go in and out. If you're breathing from your chest, most likely it's coming in and out here, or your shoulders may be going up, that's really bad. Don't do that. All right, let's play exercise number three again, B. Ready? One, two, three, Four. Excellent job. How are you doing? Are you still remembering to tongue it? Let's do it one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Ready to learn the next note? 
Our next note is C, and to play C, we're going to take the thumb off, and we're going to have index and pinky. Now, the way your flute should be held is it should be sitting or resting right here. So when you play C, your flute's still not all wobbly because it's resting on your hand right there. I don't know if you can see that. And then, you know, your flute should be resting here on your thumb, so it still should be pretty secure in your hand. And C is the highest note we know so far. All right, ready to tackle exercise four? All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent job. How'd you do? All right, let's play it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent job. Are you remembering to tongue and to breathe from the diaphragm? Let's do it one more time. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Ready to mix up the notes we've just learned? I think you can do this. So if you get confused on just looking at the notes and what they are, take out your pencil and on the top of the staff, oh, the staff is also what all the notes are on. That's what those five lines are that in the spaces. That's called the staff. Anyway, write the note above the staff. So like how we see on exercise one, they have written G on the top. 2 has A, 3 has B. Just do the same thing if you seem to be getting confused and are struggling to remember what the note is. Just write on top C, B, A, G, G, A, B, C. Now another thing to mention about this upcoming exercise is it's actually two lines. You see here on the first line at the end it does not have the double bar. That means it continues on. You can kind of tell from its alignment that it is that way too, but not all music's written like that. So just take note that this has two lines. All right, ready to play? Let's do this, I know you got it. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. So a good practice thing to get into the habit of is if you still have like a measure of count, I usually hold my flute up until it's done. 
It's just um, proper performance etiquette. That's a good way of putting it. All right, ready to give it a try again? All right, let's do it. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent job. Did you hold your flute out until the song was absolutely over? How about tying and using your diaphragm? I know it's gonna sound a little repetitive, but theories are things we should just get in the habit now. It's so much easier to just learn it the right way than trying to fix it later. I know from experience, yikes. <laughs> All right, let's do that one one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent job. Ready to take out the rests? This will make your brain think a little faster because now we don't have the rests to think about our fingerings. All right. I know you can do this though. We've been doing good all day. All right. So exercise number six. And everything is still a whole note. So no worries about rhythm. All right. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent. So now you have to really get a little better at counting in your head though, because you can't really count and play at the same time, or at least count out loud. That's what I mean. <laughs> All right. How'd you do? All right. Ready to do it again? All right. Ready? One, two, three, four. How did you do? Better? Let's do it one more time. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent job. Ready to move on to our next exercise? Once again, there are no rests in this. 
Um, but they do change the notes around a little bit. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. How'd you do? Ready to do it again? All right, ready? Remember, this is exercise number seven. One, two, three, four. Excellent job. So here is where your twos and tas should be heard a little bit more and you should feel like you're doing a little bit more because it's almost like the ta, ta, ta. I know those one, who knows, but it kind of cuts off our note we were playing and moves into the new note we're playing. All right, so make sure you're still tonguing. All right, one more time, exercise seven. Ready? One, Two, three, four. Ready to move on to our next one? So this is kind of very similar. It has no rests, but the notes are changing from the previous exercise. All right, ready? Exercise eight. One, two, three, four. that. Remember, if you're struggling to remember what the notes are, you can always pencil them in. And I suggest, yes, using a pencil because you never know. Your director may change a note, may add sharps, flats, naturals, which we'll get to later. Anyway, moral of the story, the director can change anything at any moment. So it's always safe to use a pencil. All right, let's do exercise number eight again. Ready? One, two, three, Four. Wonderful. Feeling better each time we play through? I sure hope so. All right, let's play it one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. All right, on to our last exercise of the day. You're doing really well, especially because we've learned four new notes and we're just getting really comfortable, but still four notes for a whole day or within our lesson, it's kind of a lot, but that's okay. I mean, the more we practice, the better we get. So I have full confidence this is going to be no problem for you and you're gonna get very far along on your flute journey. All right, so exercise number nine. Ready? One, two, three, 
four. Great job, how'd you do? They all feel kind of similar, but I mean, it just has note changes and that's really important because the notes are not always right next to each other. So, great job. All right, let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent. Now, if you've been playing with us and you're here, learn, well, not learning since you, this seems probably easy, make sure you're listening for a nice, solid tone during these whole notes. So you want to just make sure they're strong and steady. You don't want any, you don't want any airiness, you don't want, want just a nice, solid sound. So that's what you should be working on. All right, let's do this one last time. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent job. We hit a lot for just one day. I'm really excited you're here and I hope you keep this up. If you struggle with anything, let me know in the comments and we'll work it out. Thanks for joining me and until next time.